This place is locked, isn't it? And I have to find the key before I can go in here. Yeah. Meat day. Today is meat day, Tonkair. We feast on meat. What are you celebrating, Hatongair? Hatongay brought meat this morning, said a warehouse door was left unlocked, so we took some. Boos Vlad grows fatter by the day. He works, he takes the profit, so we've decided to take the meat at least. Is it at least fresh? It's cured, old Boon. Who would keep fresh meat in a warehouse? And if you need a drink, the water's next to the factory wall, see? Barrel water is the best, brought from the steppe. But in a pinch, you can drink this, too. Alright. Show me the meat. Okay, I want all of that. Oh, they like pocket watches? Yeah, I'm absolutely buying all of that. That is super worth it. I'm really hoping before the infection hits, I can have a decent stockpile of food. Because it's so much cheaper early on. I think it's going to be a little bit hard to make money, though. Because... Because... I mean, I can rifle around in trash cans. I'll find some stuff that way, of course. But when I find the kids' caches, I'm not going to be taking things. Um, I can't just go into previously infected districts and, you know, kill a bunch of bad guys and loot the house. I mean, I could loot houses, I guess, but I don't think it'd be a good idea just yet. I don't know, maybe selling herbs? Because, like, I don't need the herbs for a little while. I assume... What just happened? Oh, that's the water barrel. Um, hmm. I mean, the tavern isn't even marked yet, so I assume I can't go inside of it. Just yet. How much money do I have? <laughs> 22. It's basically nothing. I kind of want to go back here and pick herbs. Is that a ridiculous thing to do right now? Do I even have room for it? I mean, yeah. But where am I even going to put them? I guess Lara's place. I'll pick her up some other time. I'm going to stockpile as many water bottles as I can and not trade them away for bandages unless I absolutely need to. Because I know I'm going to need them for tinctures. That wasn't the main problem I had with tinctures. It wasn't the herbs. Oh, my brothers. My brothers and spirits. Behold a man, head higher than the sky. Behold a creature of well-earned pride. Dare I trouble you, good sir, with trivial talk. Great. Poet. Go ahead. I'm listening. Oh, how ferocious Mother Nature is, for it is her wrath that must be borne. Oh, friend, if only I could quench my thirst. I'd give heaven and earth for a sip of cold water. You're literally next to a pub. The pub is closed, good sir, but even if it wasn't, what makes it open, really? One must ask oneself. And anyway, Stamatin the curmudgeonly has introduced new rules with another sort of liquid flowing. A fiery one. A good one, but not one I need at the moment. So, do you have water? I don't, but the river is right there. You'll make it. I believe in you. That's not true. I have water, obviously. <laughs> Only brute beasts drink from the river. Us proud men deserve spring water. It's brought here in barrels, but they're too often empty. I would get it there, but I have no bottles. I drink from a fountain, but I might faint first. The air is far too heady. Yeah, right. I didn't come halfway across the country to get you a drink from a barrel. I think they'll be fine.
Ah, I hear Mother Bodo. Will the roots come out even now? Yes. Should I try to buy the gun that that person sells here for like three days? Nah, honestly, I think my money would be so, so much better spent on stockpiling food when it's cheap than buying a pistol. Since I don't remember exactly how the whole morning plays out, I think I'm just going to head home. And I want to stop at a grocery store as well, just because I'm curious what the prices are like. I don't remember just how low they were to begin with. Um, these are kind of out of the way, though. Is that burning of an herb bride happening today, by the way? Or is that later? Let's go over here and check, because this is the yard where it happens, I think. So many people to trade with. There's people in the streets. I love it. So relieved they brought fresh water from the springs. Otherwise, we'd have to drink from the Gorkin. Oh, that's not Gorkin. K-H. That's just an H. So, Gorhon. 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 <laughs> I can say Gorhon water will turn you into livestock. Saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> You have no sense of humor, Tenag. Who drink from the Gorhon? Even blood would be better. So, fresh spring water is good news. But I wonder how long it will last. Used to last for quite a while. Did something change? Fat Vlad used to manage the water bearers. Now it's his son. The father is cruel, but he knows his business. The son is kinder, but useless. He'll certainly mess everything up. Why? What use are kind people? We aren't kind. We deserve no kindness. Yeah, the kin in this town have been so just... I mean, they're dying, their cultures are dying, they're just being exploited for money. Kaira seems to be convinced that they deserve it. We deserve no kindness. That's not true, though. You're not cruel, just bitter. Vlad the Younger manages the water bearers now, but he's a simpleton. I've even heard rumors he might be digging a well. Surely false, of course. Even somebody completely incompetent wouldn't do that. Indeed, I doubt anyone in this town would be that reckless. Matches? Nah. A murderer walks the streets. Human or Chabnak, who knows. But our kids are outside too. Won't stay home no matter what we tell them. Hmm. So what? Fate will get you anywhere. Fate? Why do I care if it's fate or not if illness befalls me? Who said each person only has one single fate? I didn't. Perhaps we have several. Everything's terrible. It all started with that awful tower. There's nothing we can do now. Kids do whatever they damn well please. Can't say anything to them. I mean that. Try and the words stick in your throat. They become complete strangers to us. But what about common blood, I ask you? What about paternal love? What does this have to do with the tower? Hard to explain. The tower crushes us. Try to speak a word against it, and it's as if an invisible blade slices your vocal cords. It did something to our kids. Like they're crossing a river over thin ice, and you can't follow, only call after them. Yeah, the more I hear about the polyhedron, and especially the stuff we heard at the very end of my last playthrough, with the, those two older kids, the ones that 
are ageless. <laughs> came to me and said that the place is it like controls them basically it's too big of a temptation they can't leave it so thank you for getting rid of it or something like that or please get rid of it I think they said the polyhedron is creepy it sounds rather oppressive do you know who built it the kinds of course let the fires of hell take them who else if only the Sabarovs ruled this town by themselves, it'd be such a nice place. Don't worry about the kids. They're smarter than us. Right, at this point, the termitary's locked down and they wanted me to open it, right? Oh, holy shit! I did not see that happen the first time I came here. Oh my god! Is... At this point, on day one, is the infection already in the termitary spreading? And that's why they jumped? Probably. That's the only thing that makes sense, right? They're locked in there. They're desperate to get out because they see all this, I mean, the fucking infection is just killing them all. That must be why they jumped. That changes my understanding of how the infection started. See, I thought it started with Isidore Burach. Because remember, when we end up um, going to our house, once we finally get inside, we went into that room where we saw the first black cloud, and it kind of left, it like disappeared. I thought that was the start of the infection in the town. And I think it is the start of the infection in the town, but I think at this point it's already started in the termitary. Holy shit. They'll know if I loot them. Uh, ah, uh, it's fine. I just wanted to see if they have anything important on them. They don't. It was an accident, I swear. She was trying to get out, not fall down. She held so tight. Why? Is there a fire or something? The termitary got locked in, didn't you know? Olgimsky's orders. Rumor has it the workers were on a strike. Still, why not use the window on a lower floor? That's because the workers are on the edge. They're step people, not animals. They also have feelings. They too want to live. But it gets worse for them by the year. Worse? People are like sunflower seeds to Big Vlad. He extracts their lifeblood like oil. They've had enough. They've had it with working both day and night shifts so often. So we locked them in to keep it contained, to protect the town, or we'd have a riot. A third of the town works for the Bull Enterprise. Are they all inside? Like beasts in a cage. It doesn't bode well. Jesus, a third of the fucking town. Remember, young Vlad is the one who did that. God damn it, young Vlad. You little shit. You little fucker. I know where you live. Is that where they live? Hold on. No, you you live here. I know where you live. Um Uh let's go check this place, see if the burning is happening. Well, I see a fire. But I don't see anybody on it. Is it actually possible to get here early enough that they don't get burned? I remember I tried to get here super early in my second playthrough after I restarted, after uh, episode 9 I think, or I think it was on episode 9 I restarted, and I, it seemed like I couldn't avoid it, but I think maybe I can? 
Oh no, 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 it's just you gotta wait for the cutscene. Okay, I'm skipping that because I don't want to hear the screams. Nothing but the charm left. Now I know that these, I don't think these people started this whole thing. I mean, they're complicit, obviously, but it is Shiner and Piecework. Yeah, those are the ones responsible. None of you are that person, right? Vigilante. Nope, you're just a bunch of assholes. What have you done? Oh yes, I saw your valiant attempts. Oh wait, no, it wasn't you who? They don't know. What old man? Yeah, there's nothing to do with them specifically. Alright, let's go home. Charm can be traded for things I don't need. Hmm. Food store. Let's go check the prices. You can get a piece of toast for a hundred and sixty? A full thing of fresh meat for four fifty-five? Later on this costs like fifteen hundred. Maybe more. That is so good. Uh will the charms sell for a bit? I think that's about it though. almost enough to buy the fish. I mean, I don't need to rush it, do I? No. If there's one thing I've learned in Pathologic 2, it's that you always have plenty of time. Don't worry about it. Chickity. One and two and one and two. Step has gotten into you. Who breathes air in the fall dies before he sees it all. But I like breathing. Guess a bear like you can breathe some and be fine. But only some. A bear, huh? Friends used to call me cub when we were kids. But back then it was ironic. Mom says that while twire, chicken pox, crowberry, swish, and joy all bloom, you have to sleep every five hours or your head will explode. You're thinking of a stroke. <laughs> huh? Are you a doctor or something? I hate doctors. Mom says all doctors are slackers and frauds. Even old Burrah. Oh my god, I can be such a dick. I'm a surgeon. Ever considered having your tongue removed? I'm not going to say that to a kid. Yes, I'm a doctor. Broken scissors for three. Four, five. Eh, can't get anything. Hey, big fella. On your way here, did you hear anything? Like a train? No, haven't heard anything. Train is already two weeks late. We might very well starve soon. Like, we've almost run out of sweets. Uta bartered away all her buttons for a lump of sugar yesterday. Unbelievable. Two weeks? That's a long time, actually. Ooh, I think I can get the smoked fish. Yeah. Two fishing hooks and a match. You like a lot of the things I have, but you only have soap. Hmm. 
I know there's like a clothing person that really wanted soap. I wonder if that's only after the infection though, because they wanted to wash their hands or if they just generally like soap. Hmm. Soap is big though. I don't think I want to put it in my inventory. Do you still have a name? Same as you, I believe. Father threw his out. He's faceless now. Makes me kind of sad. Cheer up. Faces and names are only fiction. Guess he did something bad. I wonder what. I don't think knowing would do you any good. But I'm curious. I would hate to lose my name. Same here. Thanks, kid. I think it might be these people that like soap. Ah, oh, what the heck? Since they're right here, let's get the soap. I'm curious. Yeah, they always like soap. Soap for Akashic. And I got the soap for... Um... Some hazelnuts. So hazelnuts for Akashic. All the food. Alright, there's another murdered herb bride here, right? Yeah. <clears throat> How? Why? Curse this air, this mind-numbing odor. What do we do now? Did you do this? No, it was a twire-addled mob. The step is in bloom and people get crazed, but never before was it this bad. But what for? In the morning, people screamed about a step abomination that had left no footprints and had bones for legs. But now look, it's only a girl. A step girl, sure, but alive. <laughs> a step girl, sure? Oh, so they're like, you know, half human, but I guess it's kind of a person. Could you plainly see that it's a normal girl? Don't you know how it goes? Get her, one screams, and the rest crowd without hesitation. Especially in the night. Especially with their minds intoxicated. Not everyone can think for themselves. It's easier to just do as you're told. Shrewd. Shavnak Adir, a clay golem of local legend, steals the shape of a young woman. If you see a man, run. Men are angry today. They kill the likes of you and I. Why are they so hateful? Looking for a murderer, turning into murderers themselves. This is how a town changes. But the earth doesn't. There. Locked shut. Won't let anyone in. Not that I object. There must be order. And so it was ordered. Our house was locked? Who ordered that? Sabro, of course. The governor. And where did my father go? So you're Burah's son, then? The one who left town so long ago? You missed him by hours. Guess it wasn't in the cards. Couldn't you have gotten here, say, yesterday? Everything would be different then. And he waited for you so eagerly. I know. I got here as fast as I could. So where's father? Guess your best wasn't good enough. What do you mean? Old Burak is dead. Dead? Dead. No one knows how. Rumor has it he was murdered. A load of bull. He was like a father to all of us. Who would kill him? I don't buy it. 
So that's who was killed tonight. Now I hear, I hear Mother Bodo. The crowd's gone mad like frightened children, so eager to catch someone, anyone, and no idea who. Some say it was an outsider, others a shop knock. When it hits home, people are quick to drag the clay wench from the depths of memory. What clay wench? A shop knock a deer, a thing of step legends. Yes, I know about it. <clears throat> well, maybe the killer was a shop knock. Who else? A person couldn't have done it. People are capable of anything. Father says, used to say this often. Oh, but of course he wasn't killed. People are mad with grief, so they parrot nonsense. And Sabrov is only too happy to prey on these rumors. He'll dig his claws deep into this case to flaunt his value, mark my words. A domineering leader, then? Tell me about it. Obviously it isn't murder, but he's given the order to seize anyone who might even be remotely suspicious. If I were you, I wouldn't go to Sabarov. Although he did take the key, and you probably want to pay your last respects to your father. He was taken by Sabarov's men. Where? No clue. People used to bring the dead to your father. You know, a doctor. How will we live now? No idea. Unbelievable. The war, the train delayed. What a terrible year. Do you even have a place to stay now? Yes, I have friends in town. Three at least. They'll help me. Do you think they still remember you? It's been six years after all. They do. Well, hey, you sticky kitten, whose meat it has eaten. Why are you covered in blood? Who are you? That's not important. Who you are, that's important. I'm old Burah's son. What I want to know is why are you covered in blood? Haven't you seen what the streets are like? Whatever. But I'll remember you. Likewise. Nice meeting you. Okay. So yeah, we just got a ton of things. <clears throat> Laura Ravel lives by the river in a house called a shelter. Um, Ruben is my father's student. Sabarov. Father's dead. I was too late. Bad grief always goads me to doing crazy stunts. We used to have a secret lair in a warehouse. Yep, so just see all the old friends. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure how long it takes till everybody tries to kill me. But let's go do these two things. I mean, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm making good time. Let's go to Ruben, who's not going to be there, but I think the Bachelor will be there. Bad grief. They're probably going to ask me to help out their people in the building over here. Help out the people. These people. Oh yes, I'm going to help them very well. I know the lines well. Oh yeah, there's the fight in the alleyway over here. I think I can stop it. Everyone calm down now. No more mob justice. What the fuck do you want? Everything's dealt with over here. No more blood. What is dealt with? The murderers. It wasn't them. And if it was, it's up for the judge to decide. Are you one of the crazies who can't keep their fists in check? Calm down. What do they do? Played vigilantes. Attacked people. I've no idea what got into them. Losing any semblance of humanity. Who screamed murder in the morning? Who rumor-mongered about the clay golem shaped like a woman? Who started murdering people with no due process? I don't know. Absurdity. How could it happen? 
How could anyone call themselves human after that? God. Go. Calm down and be on your way. I have nothing to do with any of this. I wonder if those are the two people. Shiner and Peacework, could that be them? It, it might be. Crow. A Shabnak Adig always steals the form of a woman, but that's mere illusion, broken the moment it starts to run. That's when you notice the legs, made of bone or clay. It leaves no trace behind. When it runs, the illusion dissolves, like a smell carried away on the wind. A Shabnak Adig is a myth. It's not real. You must be an outsider. If you lived here as long as I have, you'd sing a different tune. Here, the earth is alive. It bears more than just crops. Sometimes it spits out a horror so unfathomable you spend the whole night sleeping in fits and starts. Clay and bones cultivate a beast. People don't kill other people around here. Only a shop knock would do that. Well, I mean, they're kind of right. The earth is alive. It does bear more than just crops. And Saba is a shop knock. But, like, the myth is that it's some evil thing. No. I am a local. What's that? They couldn't suspect me of patricide, could they? Of course not. Impossible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would never happen. This is a dead end. Oh no, is this when it happens? Oh, it happens already? Okay, so you're old Bura, son? Yes. I've got bad news. Well, someone sharing your features spilled blood. It became known. People want revenge. Yep. It was self-defense. I had to draw a knife. Draw a knife? Bad idea. Nothing's worse than cutting a body. You think if your father was allowed to, so are you. You're not him. I know. You have nothing to do with it, I know. I'm a ferryman. Well, almost. Actually, I'm a train driver. I know you were on my train. I wasn't alone, by the way. But you were. We drivers can feel the living weight. There was only one human being on the train. You. Yes, only one human. Odd. The townsfolk aren't too fond of ferrymen and drivers, so we will help you. Go to a quay, show your face to a worm, and he'll take you wherever you ask for a fingernail. Show your face to a man, and he'll help you out with equipment. Thank you. Okay, yeah, let's get to the ferry now, and then to Lara's place. Hey, what's up? Ah, you're the starvation prompter. Thank you for the lockpick. I'm just thinking. While I'm here, I might as well stop at Ruben's place, right? It's not like it's going to take much time. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Chill. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I love this herb bride. They're so cool looking. Orman. Hey, Haralda. I didn't do anything. Behara, you can protect yourself. You shouldn't look either. 
What do you have here? I brought my bones. Why? I won't explain to you. I did nothing wrong. I just brought my bones here. What's wrong with that? These bones are mine. I didn't steal them. I tell the truth. You should be more careful with your bones, Basagan. You're acting strange, and people rarely appreciate that. What's so strange about that? They're the strange ones. Come to think of it, it isn't. So go ahead and do whatever you want, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone. It will not. I believe you, Basagan. So cool. closely enough any arc is made of a series of straight lines well one thing is clear you're a very very lucky man which means you need to take care of yourself you are so careless vora it's artemy vora right bura artemy bura apologies oh and may i ask is it true that your actions have already resulted in four deaths Three. That's what I thought. And who the hell are you, buddy? Daniel Denkovsky, Bachelor of Medicine at your service. But before we speak any further, I'd like to clarify a rather crucial thing. Just how highly do you hold your sense of duty? All Buras are guided by duty. It runs in the family. Well, from this point on, you <clears throat> owe me. I just saved you from a rather grisly fate. Oh, right, because they're protecting me from Reuben, who they think will kill me. Hmm. I love the tink, tink, tink of water on the glass on the windows. You can even see it back here. Just lovely. Perhaps I'll repay you in kind someday. Oh, I doubt it. I'm much more cautious than you. And attentive. And heedful. For example, I've managed to establish a friendly relationship with Reuben, your so-called friend. And was that hard? Your Reuben has utterly murderous intents. Isidore meant quite a lot to him. Your father was his mentor. Reuben even considers himself old Burah's true son. Unlike you. Anyway, he thinks you're to blame for your father's death. What a load of... I managed to convince him that you didn't actually kill Isidore. Well, not empirically. But I'm under the impression that, in Reuben's mind, you still caused your father's death. You did, after all, take your sweet time getting here, while Isidore was counting on your help. Is that true? It is. I've thought about that myself. Look, you have my condolences, Vora. <laughs> you fucking asshole. But since we've established that you owe me, let me explain how you'll repay your debt. Things are about to get a little tense, and I need only one thing. Just do exactly as I tell you. You're a doctor, right? Boo-ra. How are things going to get tense? Today's tragedy won't be the last. I was blessed with a naturally high intelligence, and my observations indicate that a very deadly visitor has come to this godforsaken town. That's all I can say for now. I don't like you, bachelor whatever. Allow me to sum up. Reuben told me he's the only decent doctor in town, but you're a competent surgeon. I need you alive, healthy, and quiet. Close at hand. Spare me any wild improvisations. I'll be the one handling the situation. Medicum Morbo Adhibere. I need to see if you're any good first. For now, cheers. An out-of-town dandy kindly informed me that Sta considers me a patricide. 
Madness. I guess it's for the best I missed him. I forgot, was there any loot here? Oh, yes. Heck yeah, Reuben. Ooh, that's some really good stuff. Okay. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. When I return, I think I'm going to head to grief rather quickly. Although there's nobody in the warehouses that are going to kill me anyway, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And then I'm going to head to the ferryman and get the hell out of here and up to Lara's place so she can save my ass.